Welcome to the Wordy Girl Entertainment Podcast. I am your writer-in-chief, Rosalind Jackson. I am a lover of words, and that love led me to a passion for writing. And what's the next best thing to writing? Talking about writing. So kick back and join me for mind-blowing chats about writing, covering everything from screenplays to novels to poetry, from nonfiction books to songwriting, and much more. Today, I'm talking with the amazing Tracy Edmonds, award-winning executive producer extraordinaire. She's a dynamic and multidimensional entertainment industry veteran with a proven track record of success across multiple platforms. Tracy has created and produced groundbreaking projects for television, film, and music, both independently and with major studios. She currently serves as CEO and president of Edmonds Entertainment, and CEO and President of AllRightNow.com, which is her health and wellness and lifestyle website. And if that isn't enough, she's an Emmy Award winning former co-host of Extra alongside Mario Lopez and Carissa Thompson. Tracy's most recent projects include the hit series Dion's Family Playbook, which was on the Oprah Winfrey Network, for which she served as show creator, executive producer, and talent alongside Deion Sanders, and she was executive producer of Lifetime's With This Ring, starring Regina Hall, Jill Scott, and Eve. Tracy serves on the Board of Governors for the Producers Guild of America, and she is a co-chair for their annual Produced By Conference. She also serves on the Board of Trustees for the American Film Institute and is a member of the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts, and Sciences. I can go on and on about all of the amazing projects Tracy has done, but you're going to have to check it out on IMDb because there's too many to name here. (laughs) Ooh, thank you, Roz. Okay, and am I your first podcast Yes, yes, you are my very first interview. I am honored because you and I, we go way back, don't we? Way back, way back. (laughs) Yeah, for all of y'all who do not know, Roz started off as an intern for Edmonds Entertainment way back in the 90s. 98, I was was two then. Oh, (laughs) yeah, and I I was only four. (laughs) But since then, you have grown into being my assistant slash development executive. Yes. slash co-producer on yes. what Dion's family playbook, Dion's family playbook with this and with this ring mm-hmm. so yeah I had a I was so honored to you know be co- co-producer on those projects oh well, we've done a lot together <laughs> and look yes. at you now girl you got yes. wordy girl entertainment <laughs> and a podcast going on yes so, yes I'm let's trying to it. do it <laughs> <laughs> so how did you get your start in the tv and film business well Roz I guess I have to rewind back to 1992 which is the year that I entered the entertainment business. And so I started in entertainment through music. And so I started as a music publisher and had um, songwriters such as John B. And as their publisher, I'd hustle and get their songs placed on albums and on soundtracks and in movies and in TV shows. Mm -hmm. And from there, I segued into having a record label because okay. John B., my writer, also wanted to be a recording artist. And so um, we caught the attention of Sony Music. And then Sony Music became my partner on my publishing company and in my record label. So John was my first artist. And we did double platinum on his first album, oh, wow. which I'm really proud of. <laughs> so from having a record label, I started dabbling into film. And so I became a music supervisor. And so the first film that I music supervised was a short film called Tuesday Morning Ride, written and directed by a lady named Diane Houston, who's super talented. Her short film actually got nominated for an Academy Award. Oh, wow. And so that was my first segue into the film side of things. And so then I kind of liked it. And so I started looking for scripts to produce because Mm -hmm. I wanted to kind of segue from being a music supervisor into actually being a producer and came across a script called Soul Food. Oh wow, one of my favorites. Thank you, (laughs) written by George Tillman. And so George uh, gave me the script because he was looking for someone to help him put a soundtrack together. So I was first approached as, again, a music supervisor, you know, soundtrack producer, read the script, fell in love with the script and I said, hey, okay, well, the script is amazing. 
how about letting me produce this? And so I said, do you have a producer attached to it? So at that time, they didn't have the, the film set up at all. So I talked George into letting me produce it because it, it would have been my first um, entree into production. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so we agreed um, that I would also um, do the soundtrack and produce the film, basically. And so I was brand new into music producing. Mm -hmm. And um, I kind of went about um, producing soul food from the gut. And so when I read the script, I could visualize certain actors or actresses in different roles. Okay. And I had a lot of direct relationships with talent. And so um, I just started reaching out to talent. And so when I read the script and you know read the character Terry, I immediately thought of Vanessa Williams who I happen to be friends with. And so I called Vanessa and said, hey, Vanessa, I'm doing my first film and it's called Soul Food and I want to send you the script. I think you're going to really love it. I think you know, that you'd be great for the character of Terry. Would you take a look? So she read it. I was like, yeah, I love it. And she signed on. <laughs> Same thing happened um, with uh, uh, Vivica Fox. Okay. And so um, you know, read the, read the script and thought Vivica would be great as one of the sisters as well. And so I reached out to Vivica, sent her the script, and Vivica signed on. Same thing with Nia Long wow. as Bird. And so, um, so I started putting the cast together without even having a studio attached. So um, before we went out to studios, we were basically, you know, had the cast attached. And so I thought that would be really helpful in setting the film up. And so went out into the marketplace, went to all the different studios with this phenomenal cast attached mm -hmm. and you know thought it would be a piece of cake to get the film set up <laughs> but time and time again we were told no because um, during that era Hollywood was kind of producing what I call kind of more of the um, the urban gangster films right. and so it was kind of the era of like New Jack City mm -hmm. and Menace to Society and films like that and so uh, the studios didn't really feel like a positive film about an African-American family would really work in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And studios always go to other films and use other films as what they call comparables. And so, you know, like if you're looking to do Menace to Society, you might reference New Jack City, you know, as a comparable film because right. both, you know, have action and violence mm -hmm. and you know that kind of stuff in it um, but there were no comparables for a film like Soul Food so um, so I kept being told no time and time again by all the different studios mm -hmm. finally I went to Fox 2000 and so at that time it was headed up by a woman named Laura Ziskin who um, I just loved and adored she has since passed but Laura was um, the producer on movies like Pretty Woman and Spider-Man and a phenomenal producer and um, I went to her to pitch Soul Food, and she was kind of our last stop. And she read the script, and within the next day, she called me in and said, let's do it. And I was so surprised. <laughs> but the beautiful thing is that she saw what I saw in the film and in the script, that it wasn't really a movie specifically only about an African-American family. It was a movie about family. Right. Exactly. And it had a lot of themes that we can all relate to. Like, mm -hmm. you know, there were sibling rivalry issues. Yeah. Issues, you know, there was like a, you know, the, the matriarch character, you know, um, Big Mama, you know. Yes. So there was, there were a lot of issues that, you know, people of all colors could connect to. And she saw that. And so she believed in the film. And um, it, the next step was like a whirlwind for me because mm -hmm. she greenlit the film and basically was like, okay, I'm ready to go. Um, <laughs> when can you go out to Chicago to shoot this? Mm -hmm. Now, the trick was I happened to have been pregnant with um, Brandon at the time and mm -hmm. I was about in my ninth month. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> and I was ready to deliver when I got the green light on Soul Food. So, um, so I mean, true story. I, you know, was doing pre-production, you know, while I was pregnant and <laughs> crewing up, and you know, you know, finishing out the cast and all that kind of stuff. Delivered Brandon, and then you know, immediately had to go out to Chicago to film a movie. And so I'm out in Chicago 
breastfeeding and you know <laughs> everything else on the set. You yeah, know? that's work. Yeah, <laughs> while we're making this movie, mm -hmm. but um, the movie was. I mean, it was magical. It was my first film and you know when I say you know you kind of like a lot of times in this business you just go from intuition so I went mm -hmm. from intuition you know on casting you know um, I worked with Kenny on the music for the soundtrack um, but you know production design wise and and costume design wise I work with people that I knew like my costume designer was the same um, stylist that I had used for my wedding oh wow and so um, so actually the wedding dress that Bird wore mm -hmm. in Soul Food was um, a knockoff of my wedding dress. Oh, okay. that's amazing. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so I just, I, I handpicked people that I trusted and handpicked the cast and, you know, put it all together. And then the rest was, you know, George Tillman's brilliance in, mm -hmm. in directing. And um, we were very blessed and we had a hit, and, you know, for, for my first movie. Oh, wow. Now, how long did it take to shoot? So food. We had about, I think we had about like 42 days oh, to, wow. yeah, to shoot Soul That's Food. Fast. Yeah, it was really fast. Um, we shot Soul Food in Chicago um, during the middle of winter, and it, I mean, it was brutally cold. Oh, wow. Yeah, um, but it was, I mean, it was amazing. And so, um, you know, I always kind of tell the story about how, you know, for your first film, you know, I mean, you just learned so much just mm -hmm. getting your feet wet. And mm -hmm. so, like, every step is, like, very memorable. And so, for me, when we finished the film and we finished post and it was time for our first um, audience test screening, I had never been through that experience before at all. And so, um, the first time they test your film in front of a live audience mm -hmm. can be so nerve-wracking, you know, <laughs> and, like, you're just... You know, we we went to it was a commercial theater. I think it was like an, an AMC theater, like in Cerritos, California, I mm -hmm. think. And you know, the theater was packed. It was inside a shopping mall. Oh wow! I've and, been to one of those. Before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, They're interesting. <laughs> yeah, inside a shopping mall, and we're sitting there watching our movie for the first time, and you know all the scenes that are supposed to be funny. You know all the scenes that are supposed to be sad, right. and, you, and so as each scene comes up, and you're like, "Okay, this is a funny scene," you're like looking all through the audience to see if anybody's laughing. Like, Please laugh. Yeah, you're like, fingers crossed that they're gonna laugh. And um, for us, they laughed. Okay. You know, and for the emotional scenes, I'm like looking at people's expressions, and I see tears. I'm like, "Yay!" <laughs> and so, um, so the the first test screening went really well, and um, you know, afterwards they you know kind of hand out these you know sheets to fill out and you kind of you know give the film a score and then they average your scores and it's like a test mm -hmm. and so on a scale from zero to a hundred you get scored and oh, the wow. higher you do you know the better you do and the more support you're going to get from a film studio so for okay. us we scored a 96. Oh my god yeah that's really high. <laughs> yeah so we got really really lucky and so I remember just kind of sitting in the theater like in the theater had cleared out and the guy that's in charge of the focus test comes in. He's got all the papers collected mm -hmm. and stuff. And then he announces the score. And again, that's another nerve-wracking moment where oh, you're wow. just like, Oh, they do it right there. They do it right there. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. The oh, yeah. They, <laughs> they average out those scores and they come back into the theater mm -hmm. and then they tell you your score. And, um, and we, you know, we were like, I was sitting with George Tillman and everybody. <laughs> we were like, that sounds good. Is that good? <laughs> and he's like, that's great. That's great. And so we were like jumping up and down. So, and again, when you're blessed and you have a good score, then mm -hmm. that means that the studio is going to get behind you. And Fox 2000 really got behind the film. It was okay. amazing. You know, we had a huge premiere and we had a big um, after party afterwards mm -hmm. at House of Blues. And oh, so wow. we had performances Everybody that was on the soundtrack actually performed. So it was like a, a soul food concert. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, it was a concert afterwards and mm -hmm. stuff. And so um, it's so funny. I had to break out some of those pictures one day, Roz. You'll see <laughs> you'll see young Queen Latifahs and everybody. Some of them. Yeah, before. everybody was there. It was a, a big event in LA. Oh, so okay. So what would you say was your biggest lesson you learned from shooting soul food? Um, I think really the, the the biggest thing is just really uh, following your intuition. Oh. And, and I think you've got to do that with every project that you do in this industry. You follow your intuition. And that means when you feel right about something, mm -hmm. go for it. And mm -hmm. when you don't feel right about something, don't go for it. Okay. And so my biggest mistake in the industry was 
doing a film that I didn't feel right about. Mm. And so sometimes, you know, you can get involved in a project. Um, the money might be great, mm -hmm. but you might not feel great about a project. Right. And so, and your gut is telling you, mm, you should pass, mm -hmm. you know, mm, you know, I, I don't know if that director can really do it. You know, <laughs> mm, I don't know if that actress can right, really do right. it. And you need to really pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. And so the, the one time when I didn't pay attention to that mm -hmm. was my, um, a most poorly performed film. I'll say that. <laughs> Care to name it or no? No. <laughs> okay. we'll, we'll, we'll keep that under wraps. Yeah, I'll let them guess. <laughs> and uh, I think I can guess what we want. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So tell us what projects you're working on now. I'm really excited about my new series that's on BET. The working title is called Games Divas Play, and it's based on the best-selling novel written by Angela Burt Murray, who mm -hmm. I did um, with this ring with that right. was formerly called The Vow, right. um, the, my lifetime movie. <laughs> She's a great writer. She is so awesome. And um, so this series, it's a one-hour drama. It's exciting. It's suspenseful. There's a, a mystery involved, mm. and it's set against the backdrop of the NBA. Mm -hmm. And so you have three really strong, powerful women as our main characters. You've got a baller's wife, you've got a baller's side chick, uh. and you've got um, the baller's wife's best friend who's a reporter that's kind of covering all the drama and craziness going on behind the scenes, you know, for the NBA. That's a hot bag <laughs> for conflict. Oh yeah, it's a <laughs> which lot, is what you need in a, a movie. lot of juiciness and a lot of oh no she didn't moment. Right. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So when do you plan on going into production for that? We're actually um, we're doing our writers' room this summer, and so we have a ten episode order, and uh -huh. so um, we're you know putting together the writers' room right now. They're going to start writing the episodes this summer. Oh, wow. And we should start production on this either towards the end of the year or the top of the year. But I'm um, really, really super excited about it. It's going to be really, really cool. And um, are there any films you're working on at the moment? Oh, yes. And so we have um, a road trip thriller that I'm really excited about. It's called okay. End of the Road. And um, it is an African-American road trip, family road trip, gone wrong. I'll just say oh. that much. <laughs> so they get caught up in something that they were not expecting. And oh, wow. So, yeah. So it's, I mean, it's uh, quite the thriller. So we're, we're very excited about that. Oh, okay. And who's yeah. involved with that project? Anybody you can name? Doing that through Lionsgate mm -hmm. and Code Black. And so we haven't started casting yet. I can tell you, yeah, who I want, but <laughs> we haven't started casting yet. Okay. So tell us what would be your dream project to work on, like any certain genre or type of story you would love to work on? You know, Roz, I'm a hopeless romantic. <laughs> And so um, I don't think there are enough great love stories right. or romantic comedies. And yes. so I want to be the producer that brings that back. I've done a couple in my body of work, mm -hmm. but um, I really, really am hankering to do a great love story. We need that. Yes. We need that. <laughs> in these times, we I need know. peace and love. <laughs> we sure do. I know. We need some wish fulfillment. Right, right. <laughs> so uh, what was the last movie you saw? Believe it or not, it was Jurassic Park. <laughs> so, oh, <okay. laughs> so I went with my kids, and so we actually, it's, it's getting harder and harder for me to go to the movie theater mm -hmm. to see stuff. Right. Modern day technology just makes everything so convenient. So exactly. I'm used to just kind of Netflixing it or mm -hmm. iTuning it. Um, but for Jurassic Park, we're, I love dinosaurs for whatever reason. Oh, okay. I've always had a fascination. <laughs> so we went to the theater to go see that and oh, okay. get the full effect of the surround sound and, and everything. So oh, pretty wow. cool. <laughs> and what are you watching on TV now? Do you binge watch? You know, I don't get a chance to watch as much TV as I'd like to because I'm mm -hmm. always working and reading scripts and things. But my favorite show is Insecure. Mm -hmm. And so uh, yes. that, that's my show that I binge watch. And that's I'm always, coming back real soon. Yes, and I'm always so mad when I hit the season finale. And mm -hmm. I'm like, darn it, I want more. <laughs> and so um, I love Insecure. I think Issa Rae is mm -hmm. a, just a genius. Yes. And, you know, I love the writing. I love mm -hmm. the acting. I love the characters. Mm -hmm. I love the stories. You know, that's my favorite. I also love Atlanta. Oh, that's a good one. That's another good one. Yes. And then um, on Netflix, I watch Black Mirror. 
too. Okay. So I kind of, I love the sci-fi, mm -hmm. Twilight Zone style stuff. And so, um, so that's a good show too. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if you had to pick, would you say Netflix or Hulu? Netflix. Oh, okay. all day. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, Netflix all day long. Yeah, I, I mean, I think they're doing a great job with yes. all of their programming and stuff. It's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. They have yeah. so, so many different projects. Sometimes you'll look and it'll, you'll see something pop up and you're like, what is this? And it'll be like new episodes and you're like, oh, wow. They've got great programming in all genres. Like yeah. even, the, you know, the stand-up comedy specials. Mm -hmm. And what is the other one that I watch? Um, Stranger Things. Oh, that's a good yeah, one. Yeah, I love that show too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, cool. So uh, tell the people where they can get in contact with you online. You know what, folks? Like if you guys want to reach me, uh, I am reachable through Instagram and Twitter. So at T-R-A-C-E-Y-E. E-D-M-O-N-D-S is my Twitter handle and my Instagram handle. Please check out my health and wellness website. Oh, yes, tell us about yes, that. Yes, that's at allrightnow.com, and it's spelled A-L-R-I-G-H-T-N-O-W.com. We are sharing tools on how to be the best you and how to live your best life, and so we have diet tools, fitness tools, relationship tools, career tools, you name it. We want everybody to live their best life, and so check out our website. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Rod. <laughs> this has been fun. <laughs> Warty girl. <laughs> Thanks for taking the time to tune in to the Wordy Girl Entertainment Podcast. Don't forget to check out my blog at www.wordygirlent.com. That's W-O-R-D-Y-G-I-R-L-E-N-T.com. You can also find me on Instagram and Twitter at at WordyGirlENT and on Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash WordyGirlENT. And always remember, it all begins with a single word. So what are you waiting for? Go write. <laughs>